Given the chemical complexity of determining the sequence of a polypeptide, you might imagine that synthesizing a peptide of defined sequence from the amino acids is likewise a difficult problem. Let's take a moment to appreciate some of the problems associated with peptide synthesis. In examining these problems, we'll think about the fundamental chemical nature of the amino acids and how this both helps and hinders us in our quest for a well-defined polypeptide. Let's simply begin with two amino acids, leucine and valine. We've seen that the amino groups in both of these amino acids may act as nucleophiles. Keep that in mind. But now, take a moment to appreciate how the carboxylic acid is a sort of masked electrophile. If we could somehow replace the hydroxyl groups with good leading groups, the carbonyl carbons would become powerful electrophiles. This process of turning the carboxylic acid functional group into a good electrophile is called carboxylic acid activation, and we'll see it in practice later. For now, assume that we can activate both carboxylic acids, meaning that when we mix the two amino acids together, two distinct nucleophiles and two distinct electrophiles will be present. There's a problem here. If we were to simply couple the two amino acids now, we would end up with two products one in which leucine is the N-terminus, leucine acted as the electrophile here, and one in which valine is the N-terminus, which comes from valine acting as the electrophile. Since we only desire one of these sequences, already we've lost half of our material to an undesired sequence, and the problem gets worse as more amino acids get tacked on to the first two. What's the solution to this problem? What we need to do somehow is isolate a single nucleophile and a single electrophile for each peptide coupling event. We cannot simply mix amino acid with a growing chain and subject the mixture to coupling conditions. This would lead to the selectivity problems just described. Thus, to fully solve the problem of peptide synthesis, we need three general steps. Isolation of the nucleophile, isolation of the electrophile, and peptide coupling. In practice, to isolate the nucleophile, we block the amino nitrogen on our target electrophile. Its nucleophilicity can be decreased to negligible levels if we place the nitrogen in conjugation with the carbonyl group. This is typically accomplished through the action of the reagent Bach anhydride, or tert-butoxycarbonyl anhydride. Treatment of the desired N-terminus with this reagent leads to a stable carbamate after an addition-elimination mechanism. Now that the N-terminus is part of a carbamate, we can rest assured that it won't react as a nucleophile. Isolating the electrophile is as simple as only activating one of the carboxylic acid groups. One acid is made into a good electrophile, and the other is left as the relatively inert carboxylic acid group. We would like the N-terminal amino acid's carboxylic acid to act as the electrophile in the coupling, so we only activate the Bach-protected N-terminus. In practice, the reagent used to activate carboxylic acids is a strong electrophile, dicyclohexyl carbodiimide, or DCC. When treated with DCC, carboxylate acts as a nucleophile towards the electrophilic protonated CN double bond. After nucleophilic attack, a neutral product results, which now possesses a good leaving group where the hydroxy group used to be. To see that this is a good leaving group, imagine cleaving the CO bond and giving the electrons to oxygen. The result is a resonance stabilized anion, which when protonated, leads to a neutral molecule of dicyclohexyl urea. With the N-terminus blocked and one carbonyl group ready for action as an electrophile, we introduce the nucleophilic amino acid. No tailoring of the nucleophilic amino acid is needed because the amino group reacts selectively with the activated electrophile. After addition, elimination, and proton transfer, we see that a peptide bond has formed along with a molecule of dicyclohexylurea. Now, the N-terminus remains blocked, and to couple a second amino acid, all we need to do is activate the new C-terminus with DCC, then treat the activated electrophile with another equivalent of the next amino acid. 
we can repeat this process as many times as we need to in order to secure our desired peptide sequence. At the end of the sequence, we need a way to free up the blocked amino terminus. This is conceptually somewhat difficult because the Bach nitrogen bond that we need to break looks a lot like an amide bond. Luckily, the presence of an additional oxygen atom makes the Bach carbonyl group the most basic carbonyl in the polypeptide. Treatment of the Bach protected polypeptide with a solution of trifluoroacetic acid in water thus leads to selective cleavage of the nitrogen Bach bond through hydrolysis. What's left behind is our desired polypeptide. In this webcast, we learned how to construct a polypeptide of defined sequence using a five step process. First, block the desired N terminus using Bach anhydride. Then, Activate the N-terminus's carboxylic acid as an electrophile with DCC. Next, introduce the next amino acid in the sequence and allow it to couple with the electrophile. Repeat steps 2 and 3 until the desired sequence is obtained. Finally, use trifluoroacetic acid, or TFA, to cleave off the blocking Bach group. Make sure you're comfortable with each of the reagents introduced in this webcast. Bach anhydride, DCC, and trifluoroacetic acid, or TFA, all play critical roles in selective peptide coupling reactions. Recognize the reactive parts of each molecule and consider how the reactivity of each figures into the larger idea of selective peptide synthesis.